When you suffer with acne blemishes, you don't feel very free. What does it take to see clear skin? But if you have a teenager who struggles with acne... I tried everything to get rid of my acne. <laughs>One thing I want you guys to know is that when it comes to acne, you've been lied to. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the truth about acne as I know it so that you or anyone that you know who suffers with acne will no longer feel ashamed or embarrassed by it. So scrolling through social media, I know you will see nothing but flawless, airbrushed, super perfect skin. And that makes it seem that that kind of skin is normal and that if you have skin that's anything but that, not only are you abnormal, but you're flawed and you're ugly. The skin that you guys see on social media and even in magazines and on TV is not the skin of real life. If you look at any of these influencers or celebrities, what you see on their Instagram, if you compare it to what you see on Google and in real life, like paparazzi unposed pictures, you will see that skin texture is totally normal, totally natural, totally beautiful. And yet society is trying to make you feel like if you have pores or if you have have oily skin or if you have pimples, spots, blemishes, acne, wrinkles that you are disgusting, should be embarrassed by it, should absolutely desperately be seeking out a way to cure it or get rid of it or spending your hard-earned money on crazy skincare products that promise to give you skin that looks like this when it's not going to because skin like this doesn't exist in real life. You would be so surprised at how many of your favorite influencers or celebrities either currently suffer with some form of acne or have suffered with some form of acne in the past and you would never know about it. Why? Because said influencers and celebrities go to great lengths to hide it. And I can understand why. Look at Katy Perry, for example. Katy Perry is so successful, so beautiful, so adored, but Katy Perry, because she's a human being, hasn't always had perfect skin. As you guys can see, Katy Perry has in the past suffered with acne and still currently, sometimes she suffers with breakouts and that shouldn't be anything to be ashamed of. And yet Katy Perry has been actively made to feel super embarrassed by her skin by huge publications. Look at this article featured on the New York Daily News website, basically shaming Katy Perry for her pimple packed face. The article goes on to say, although Perry tried to cover her mug with a baseball cap and aviator sunglasses, she couldn't hide the nasty breakout around her mouth and chin. It goes further, acknowledging that Katie admits to feeling insecure about her acne and acne scarring and that she wears makeup to hide it. The article scathingly replies, as her new photos show, she doesn't wear enough. I could not believe my eyes when I read that article. Like who the heck wrote that? Nobody wants to open themselves up to criticism or ridicule. Nobody wants to be told that they're ugly or that they should be ashamed of the way they look. I mean, you can't help it if you have acne. In fact, you cannot help what you look like at all to a certain extent. So let's take a look at a few very prominent, very well-known influencers and celebrities with acne. I feel like the more people that step forward with their acne and don't be ashamed of it and show other people that have acne that they shouldn't be ashamed of it either, the more it's going to be normalized to have acne and it's not going to be so sticky and people aren't going to be told that they are ugly if they have acne or that they're flawed. Now let's get into the truth about acne because this is what a lot of people don't realize. There 
isn't just one form of acne. There's actually a lot of different forms of acne. Not all acne is the same. There is cystic acne, whiteheads, blackheads, pustular, papula, rosacea acne, which is what I had, and nodular acne. There is this misconception that having acne means you are dirty, flawed, unattractive, ugly or even infectious. Yes, there are still some people that think that if you go near or touch someone with severe acne that you may catch it. None of which is true. Acne may show up on your face, on your neck, on your chest, on your back. Heck, acne can pretty much show up anywhere. Acne is also super common. The fact of the matter is that over 90% of human beings on the face of the planet today will at some point in their lives suffer from some form of acne. Acne is very common and yet it doesn't have to be your normal. So what I mean by that is that you don't have to be embarrassed by having acne. You don't have to feel ashamed of it. You don't have to rush out and grab the first thing that you think is gonna cure you because acne in a lot of ways is your body trying to communicate with you. It's your body trying to talk to you and tell you that there may be an imbalance somewhere. For example, acne can be caused by something such as PCOS, which in the case of Kiki Palmer, she says that that is what caused her acne. It could be caused by a hormonal imbalance, which is why a lot of people, when they're going through puberty, they will develop acne. It's because their hormones are kind of all over the place and trying to figure themselves out and balance themselves out. And that's why a lot of teenagers get acne. Puberty can also cause acne. Vitamin A deficiency can also cause acne, which is why in a lot of cases, Roaccutane, or Accutane will help slash cure acne. It's because you're basically highly, highly dosing the body with vitamin A, but vitamin A can be toxic. If you have too much vitamin A, it is a fat soluble vitamin. It can build up in your body and it can be toxic. Stress can cause acne. Gut dysbiosis. So if your gut microbiome is off, if you've got an imbalance in your gut bacteria, that can cause acne. Food allergies, food sensitivities, all of the above can cause acne. And that is why there are also so many different types of acne. It's not just like a black and white thing. And that's why it kind of aggravates me when I see these like skincare brands who are charging you an absolute bloody fortune, promising to cure your acne and give you the skin of like these people, for example, who apparently no longer have acne and have perfect skin, the kind of skin which is poreless, flawless, and doesn't actually exist in real life. How can these products cure your acne when number one, they don't know what is causing it to begin with. They don't know what kind of acne you have. And the thing is, right, even if you do see a great dermatologist or you see a great doctor or you see a great naturopath and they manage to get to the root issue of why you have your particular kind of acne to begin with, and they do manage to resolve the acne or resolve whatever issue was causing your skin to erupt and be inflamed, it can sometimes leave you with severe scarring. So even after you get rid of your acne, you can still be left with scarring. Like I still have scarring on my face in the form of little red patches from when I was like 14 years old that are never going to go away. And it's extremely, extremely common. Like look at Megan Fox, for example. She is, I think, classified as one of the most beautiful women on the face of the earth. And yet she clearly has suffered with some form of acne at some point in her life. Because if you look at her, well, if you look at her Instagram, you're not going to have a clue because let's be real, guys. Look at the pictures she posts on Instagram. She looks totally flawless. That, my friends, is called filters and editing. But if you look at pictures of Megan Fox up close that are unedited, you will see that she does in fact have pores and fine lines, but she also does have what appear to be tiny little acne scars. So when it comes to acne, try and get to the root cause of what is causing your particular inflammation, because in a lot of ways, that's what acne actually is. You can kind of look at it as though it's a medical issue. It's not a flaw. It's not something to be embarrassed about. It certainly doesn't make you ugly. If you look at any other medical issue, like say you've got chronic migraines, a cold, <laughs> asthma, nobody is embarrassed by those things. Nobody is told that they're ugly because they have asthma. No one is told that they're ugly because they have a chest infection. People are told that they're ugly and that they should be embarrassed by having a medical issue show up on their skin or their face. And it's just ridiculous really when you break it down. My advice would be to either see a doctor, see a dermatologist, see a naturopath, see a functional doctor. Heck, see all four if your budget allows and try and get to the root issue of what is causing your particular kind of acne and what particular kind of acne you have. Because like I said, it's not all the same. It's not all black and white. And by doing that, hopefully, you can avoid the pitfalls of the marketing industry. So the acne marketing industry is absolutely huge. Just to name a few that really bugged me personally, do you guys remember the epic 
cup of Shea Mitchell. <laughs> Shea Mitchell, who has famously admitted to having acne in the past and as such became an ambassador and got paid, I'm sure, a heap of money to be the ambassador of skincare brand Biore. She made sponsored content on her Instagram account advertising Biore's deep pore cleansing strips, amongst other products. Here she is advertising Biore's charcoal micellar water, which promises to smoothly dissolve dirt, oil, and stubborn makeup and absorb excess oil. All things that you would think in theory would lead to you having less acne. However, in her video, if you look closely, you will see that Shea doesn't even use the bloody product on her skin. She is pretending. She wipes the product in the air above her eye and then triumphantly turns the wipe around to show what she's trying to pass off as her makeup on the pad. Yet her makeup is so perfect. She never actually touched her eye. She says that the cleanser leaves her skin feeling so fresh and so clean. Don't believe all that is marketed to you guys. Then there's Kendall Jenner and her highly controversial proactive campaign. Now, if you guys know anything about proactive, they are a skincare brand that heavily market towards people that suffer with acne. The majority of their products are targeted towards curing or removing or lessening acne, which is fine. Like there does need to be skincare out there for that because it can help depending on what is causing your acne and what kind of acne you have. And I have tried proactive in the past and the products I tried, I really quite liked. However, in saying that, it doesn't mean that proactive Proactive is going to work for everybody. In fact, in a lot of cases, depending on what is causing your acne and what kind of acne you have, proactive can make your skin and your acne so much worse. So the reason that Kendall Jenner's involvement with proactive was so controversial and garnered so much backlash is because Kendall and the rest of the Kardashian clan were building up to this secret reveal that Kendall was going to do. Kendall was on social media saying she was going to release a story that was super raw and real and hard for her to talk about. And then her mum, Kris Jenner, went on social media and was like, I'm so proud of Kendall revealing this to the world. It's so hard for her to talk about. She's going to inspire so many people. Her fans were speculating all sorts of things and were brutally disappointed when they realized that this had all been just a big build up for a bloody proactive commercial. People also didn't believe that Kendall actually used proactive to cure her acne, which does not surprise me because while proactive might be effective for some people, for someone like Kendall Jenner, who is not only a celebrity, but a professional model and, and millionaire, I would more likely suspect that her dermatologist, Christy Kidd, would have likely prescribed something like Accutane or specialized medical prescription skincare to cure Kendall's acne. Her sister, Kylie Jenner, also accidentally put her foot in it, saying in an interview in 2015 that their family dermatologist, Christy, was the one who had cured Kendall's acne. It just comes across as so disingenuous and it makes me annoyed because I know firsthand that acne can totally wreck your self-esteem because of the stigma around it. And because a lot of the time, acne is really bloody painful. Like if you have nodular acne or you have cystic acne, that is deep into the tissue of your skin and that is so painful and so uncomfortable. I just think it's very unfair that so many of these companies advertise products in the wrong way to people that suffer with a medical issue such as acne. I'll give you a brief little rundown of my history with acne. And I wish that I had pictures that I could show you guys here and flash up on the screen. But I don't know, did I either refuse to allow my picture to be taken when I was going through my rosacea acne stage? Because there's pretty much no pictures of me from that stage. And I can understand why looking back, because I felt like I was hideous. I was misdiagnosed as having acne and put on Accutane twice, which if you guys are familiar with acne, you'll probably be familiar with Accutane as well. It is an extremely strong medical drug that aims at basically bombarding the body with synthetic vitamin A, which is toxic and therefore getting rid of acne. I went on it once due to my dermatologist telling me I had acne and my acne did go away only to come back worse than before when I stopped my rounds of Accutane. And it's because I was misdiagnosed. I had rosacea acne. And so my treatment should have probably been like looking at my gut health, <laughs> looking at my hormone balance, things like that, rather than just trying to mask the symptoms of my extreme inflammation in my facial skin. So I was put on another round of Accutane and this drug is so strong that I remember I had to have regular blood tests to check the functioning of my liver and to make sure that I wasn't being poisoned essentially. I still have rosacea now to this day and I am 34 and when it first popped up, when I first developed rosacea acne, my face was red everywhere and I just had whiteheads everywhere. Like I didn't have like typical traditional 
spots or acne spots or pimples there were just these tiny whiteheads everywhere and my skin was like burning so that was when I was about 13 14 and now I'm 34 now so that was a long time ago and I still have rosacea and from time to time if I'm not eating well or I'm not looking after myself I will still again develop these whiteheads on my face acne is not a flaw you're not flawed you are absolutely beautiful acne is just your body communicating with you I love your guts and I will see you in my next video